Good morning, New Beginnings Church of Life family. We're so glad that you're here. Now, let's prepare our hearts, minds, and bodies to worship Jesus together. Happy Valentine's Day. I got a question for you. Have you ever wondered what Valentine's Day really is about? Have you thought that it was only for people who are married? Maybe for those that are engaged? Or even for those that um, are just dating? Better yet, have you thought maybe it's just for the older people or just for adults? If you have, you've really missed the point of Valentine's Day. I would say that you've probably bought into the marketing schemes and the media that produces this one thought vision for Valentine's Day of chocolates and candies and cards and all that stuff and that marketing ability to get you to buy what you th they think that you should have. But Valentine's Day goes so much deeper and so far beyond that. To understand that this morning, I just want to start off briefly with... Um, the priest whose last name was Valentine, where this all began. There was a priest, and it was in the early ages. It was the time of Claudius Gothmacus uh, was ruling over Rome. And there was a law and a decree that went out that Christians could not get married. Christians were under persecution. Um, they were being tried and taken captive. And for a Christian to have the ability to have a marriage license or get married was against the law. They didn't want them marrying. They didn't want them reproducing children who would rise up to be Christians as well. So there was a real onslaught of persecutions against um, that day and age. And the priest, whose name was last name was Valentine, took it upon himself to secretly continuing to marry couples who wanted to get married when they were both believers in Christ. Because of this, when caught, he was captured and he was thrown into prison. Um, and it was there that really it starts to begin. Valentine um, loved the Lord. He loved God's people. He knew it was wrong for people to abstain and not get married if they loved each other and they wanted to serve God in a holy union. So he did marry them. And because of that and being thrown in prison, you would think he could get angry or he could have gotten mad or maybe frustrated that the laws were against what he believed, um, aggravated with the laws, aggravated with the leadership. But instead, even in that place in prison, he made good use of it. In fact, he became friends with the jailer's daughter. And he began to witness to her about the love of Christ and God's love for her life. And during this time, she would be bringing library books to him each day that he could have something to read. And they would talk as she would push the library cart around. And he befriended her and he witnessed to her and led her to Christ. And not only that, he prayed for her for God to do a miracle because she was legally blind and she was partially deaf. And he was talking to her about God's love for her so much. He didn't just extend it to the gospel and salvation, but he took it further and he prayed for her. And God in his great love and mercy healed this young jailer girl. She regained her sight. Her ears were opened. And the night before Valentine was executed, he wrote her a letter of encouragement and he signed it, Your Valentine. And that's how we start off with the very first Valentine's Day. But as believers, we know it's not about the candy and the chocolates. And we know it is about God and God's love. God is love and love is God. But I want to turn this morning, if you would, to the book of John, 
chapter 13, verses 13, 34 to 35, and I want to read this to you. It says, a new commandment, this is Jesus talking, a new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so must you love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. Well, you may think, well, that's kind of an easy task. I have love. I love people. Um, we're all the body of Christ. We're all created in his image. God has made people to look like him and respond and be like him. And we have brothers and sisters all around the world. There are saved. There are unsaved. But I can love those that are around me. And if you really truly believe you can do that on your own, you're missing the mark. Because let me remind you, it's easy to love those who love you first. If someone loves you and cherishes you, it's easy to respond back with love. But what about those who hate you or persecute you or get angry or do nasty things toward you or just flat out don't like you for who you are? Is it easy to love them? If you say yes, I would challenge you again because sometimes we have a hard time just loving those who do love us, loving those even in our households. And I'm not saying that we don't love them, but the key here is Jesus said, love them as I have loved you. And Jesus laid down his life for all of us. He didn't withhold anything back. He didn't have preconceived notions or attitudes or thoughts about this is my day, my break. I don't feel like ministering to the crowd today. No, Jesus gave it all. He loved unconditionally. He loved at all times. And we understand even through 1 Corinthians 13, a very familiar passage to us about love and what love is. Love suffers long. Jesus, of course, suffered very long on the cross. We know that. Love is kind and it does not envy. It's not proud. It doesn't misbehave. It doesn't only try to hang out with people that are just like them because that's who we get along with. Love doesn't get mad. Not easily. It thinks no evil. It does take joy in truth, but it does not take joy over evil things. Love bears all things. We know that. It believes all things. It hopes for all things, and it endures in all things. We know love never fails. This is the kind of love that Jesus was asking us to display on all mankind. This is not a once-a-year command. This is a year-round lifestyle evangelism that we are to love one another as he loved us. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44 in the King James Version reads this. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them who despitefully use and persecute you. Wow, those are powerful things that Jesus commands us to do, to love our enemies. We don't often like to think that we have enemies or that people will be against us. But there are those out there that just because we're a Christian, they will not like us. They will not like what we believe. They will not like what we stand on. But God says love them. There'll be people at your job that are challenged by you or frustrated or may feel that you're trying to get in their way. You will have enemies in life. Jesus had enemies and he was perfect. But God says love our enemies. Do good to them that speak curses about you. Do good to those that are backbiting and nitpicking against you and gossiping about you. God says, love them. Love them and do good to them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Remember, we're doing this as Jesus loved us. The priest, Valentine, understood this kind of love. He met even... Um, with the Roman ruler that was over him, Claudius. He met with him and he actually even gave him the gospel message. 
Claudius came into the prison to talk to priest Valentine and he shared with him the gospel. He shared with him Christ's love. He shared with him the good news of how much Jesus loved us and died for us to remove our sins. Claudius chose not to respond to the gospel message. In fact, hatred built in his heart, even toward Valentine, for this word because he didn't like it. He didn't want to hear it. He didn't want to acknowledge that he was even in a sinner. And he was so angry that he ordered that priest Valentine would be executed the following day. You know, and even in that anger that Claudius showed against Valentine, I don't know. I'm human. You're human. Let's think about this. It's nice to know a story. It's nice to hear history. Sometimes we need to put ourselves in the middle of it. We're imprisoned because we showed love to God's people and married them so they could bring about a holy union and multiply and create a family that would love and honor God. And this causes us to go into prison. We're in prison and the person who cast us there comes in to talk to us about why we're doing what we're doing. And we share the message of love, the gospel of Jesus Christ. He gets so angry at us that we're sentenced to death. I don't know about you, but I think I'd probably be going over my life. I'd be crying and asking God, why? <laughs> why did you allow me to be in this situation? What could I have done different? Lord, is there a way of escape? Could you open the prison doors like you did for Paul and Silas? Can you get me out of here like you did for Peter? Lord, there's got to be a way to escape this. But we read the account of Valentine. He wasn't worried about any of that. It didn't say he struggled or, or thought for any of those things. But what is recorded about his life is he took that last night to write a letter of encouragement to the prisoner, to the jailer's daughter. You know, Paul and Silas were in prison. Peter was in prison. We got most of our New Testament, our epistles and gospels that were written in love to us while people of God were in prison. And Valentine did just that. He wrote a letter of encouragement to this prison girl's daughter, jailer's daughter. And he reminded her how much God loved her. He was excited for her that she received her sight, that her hearing came back. But he encouraged her in the faith to continue on because no longer, he knew no longer were they going to have the conversations that they had every day when she came around his jail cell. And he wanted to impart something special that would continue to help her grow and live on for Christ. And in the end, he signed this letter of encouragement, your Valentine. And that's exactly the love that God wants us to show. You know, sometimes we struggle just when we get outside our comfort zone. Did you ever have a plan for a day or something you wanted to do or you were ready to kick back and you've worked hard all week and you just want your Saturday to unwind and all of a sudden your neighbor calls, I need help with this or, you know, are you available today? I need to talk and it takes us out of our comfort zone. It's going the extra mile. The Word of God says if, an, if someone asks you for your shirt, give them your coat also. Don't just do the minimal, but go the extra mile with people and show love. And sometimes that just takes us out of our comfort zone and we get uncomfortable and we don't want to give up our time and we become a little selfish. And Jesus said, no, that's not my disciples. My disciples will love even as I loved them. And we need to instill that in our hearts. We need to grab hold of it and know that it's important that we are willing at all times, in every way, despite how we feel, despite how our day is going, despite what we must be facing, to ask God to let his Holy Spirit run through us and minister to others in the love that Christ has given to us. Matthew 25, 34 through 40 says it this way. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, 
for the kingdom is prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and invite you in or even needing clothes and we clothed you? When did you see, when were you sick, Lord? And when did we go visit you in prison? The king will reply, truly, I tell you, Whatever you do for the least of these, my brethren and sisters of mine, you did it for me. This is the message of Valentine's Day. We can often think about the Good Samaritan and how he went out of his way and picked up that Samaritan, that person who did not belong to any certain nationality, creed, or place. He was considered a half-breed. And most would not talk with Samaritans. Most looked down on Samaritans. But that good Samaritan just went over and he loved unconditionally. Despite others rejecting him, despite others persecuting him, he knew that when a brother was in trouble, a fellow human being, when someone was struggling, he could not walk by. The priest walked by, the Levite walked by, but this good Samaritan could not walk by. He stopped and he ministered to the man on the side of the road. He bandaged him up. He put him on his own donkey and took him to an inn and paid the whole bill, paid for the doctors, paid for the medical. He took care of someone in need. This is a true example of the love of God that God calls us all to show and all to express. It doesn't come just on Valentine's Day. This is a yearly commission. This is a lifelong commission. We should be doing it every day of our life. This is the message of Valentine's Day. We should live this way as his disciples year round. Let the gospel message be seen in us. Let us love as he has loved us. Again, we close with the scripture, John 13, 34 and 35. I've read it before. A new commandment, Jesus said, I give you. Love one another as I have loved you and you must love one another. By this, everyone will you know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Tonight, we're going to end with a short video, so please don't clip off as I end here. I have a video I want to share with you that just even brings out this point even more. And then today, this message is short. We're asking you, activate the word. It's not only good to be hearers of the word, but we have to be doers of the word. So on this Valentine's Day, I challenge you, find somebody to love. Find someone that you can show the love of Christ through. Go out of your way. If it were, if they ask of you a shirt, give them your coat also. Be the love of Christ. Let the gospel of Christ shine through you. God bless you. Watch this little clip and we'll see you again next week. Looking forward to hearing your testimonies of how well you did. God bless. Bye-bye. So there's this holiday created to celebrate love. And it's got all the bells and whistles candy, cards, a day for chocolate and flowers, outdoing the year before if I can help it. <laughs> There's this mad rush to the store and a haste to find the gift to express my affection for the one I just can't live without. Until alas, I find the perfect sentiment <laughs> written by someone I don't even know. There's a different way to look at love to share love beyond words, beyond sentiment, beyond a single day, a whole new way to look at the word love. See, Jesus showed us another way, how to stoop down and lift up the broken. Make sure the last in life are treated like the first. 
Show the most favor to the least likely. Hang out with those that have nothing to offer me. Reach out and forgive even when it's not asked for. Ask forgiveness even when I don't think I need it. What a way to love, to give, not just from my pocket, but from my heart too. To love them beyond what they can produce. Like them for more than their talent. Hug them despite their social status. See, Jesus showed me the type of love that doesn't stick to a holiday, that speaks beyond a card, that blossoms long after a flower dies. That's the kind of love I want, I need, that I'll give, the type of love that overflows from the most amazing grace. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to go to mbcol-ny.com to connect with us. Or you can find us on Facebook and YouTube. Leave a comment, subscribe, and follow us. We would love to hear from you. There are two ways you can partner with us and give. You can go old school by making out your check and mailing it to New Beginnings Church of Life, 202 East Commercial Street, East Rochester, New York, 14445. Or you can go new school and give online at nbcol-ny.com.